Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Chingo Chats. Keep your politics at the door. We just knocked out an episode of RPT, Red Pill Tamales. Go check that out. It has its own RSS feed. Before I forget, please join the newsletter. We're trying to grow this newsletter. It don't cost you nothing to show love, man. You know, in case the censors decide to deplatform us, in case these Silicon Valley liberals want to start coming after your boy, you know, science, brown voices, marginalized brown I, I really am marginalized now just because, you know, you know, because we talking about all this real shit. It's true. They're supposed to be uplifting you. <clears throat> but no, it doesn't fit the narrative. But uh, welcome to Chingo Chats, man. Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, tw- wh- wh- what, what day does this drop? Thurs- uh, Thursday. So you want to shout out some yeah. of them uh, tours? Some ya, them merito, ya Merito se acabó el, el, el 2021. And we are back at it, y'all. Um, this just, is the last episode, by the way, of 2021 for Chingo Chats. The very last one. It's been a hell of a year. Uh, we're going to talk about this fitness challenge oh, yeah. we have going. Uh, but I am a stand-up comedian. And although I don't want to play promoter all year and you know travel and all this stuff, I love performing. But hey, it looks like uh, we're going to hit some dates. Legalized Freedom Tour. Um, all Canada dates have been canceled. <laughs> My whole can- Canadian leg of the tour, they're not allowing me into their country because I'm not jabbed. No 420 show in Canada? None of that. So Austin, Texas, February 17th. Raleigh, North Carolina, finally, man. It got postponed so many times. Riley? Riley. Raleigh. February 27th. Uh, McAllen, Texas, March 5th. Naples, Florida, March 16th through the 17th. Corpus Christi, Texas, May 5th through the 7th. Chingo de Mayo. New Braunfels, Texas, May 20th through the 22nd. Can't wait. Abilene, Texas, May 21st, Lubbock, May 22nd, San Angelo, Texas, June 3rd, Denver, Colorado, July 14th through the 16th. Um, these first cities that I'm hitting, you know, work out some new material. We didn't go to Austin last year or Raleigh last year and stuff like that. Uh, we didn't even do McAllen last year. We did Mission, but um, working in, you know, going to work in some new bits and nice. get everything ready. Exciting, man. And I, and I want to shoot a half hour this this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that later in the show, too, because uh, you mentioned it kind of briefly on a previous Chingo chat. Wanted to get your thoughts on that. But we talked about this health challenge, this fitness challenge, this wellness challenge, whatever we're calling it, on the Patreon exclusive of Chingo Chats. And it took off in the Discord. People are all about it. People were posting their home gym pictures. They were posting, oh, the shed. Yeah, the so, shed Who gyms. was that that posted the shed, man? Um, I had to show my wife just the stunt. Like, look, see? Yeah. See how other people doing it? And that's a good setup, like a bench, a bike. You know, I got the mirror, a couple bells, uh, a couple dumbbells, kettlebells. Who posted? I'm, I'm in the chat right now. And and I love that. People are super motivated. People are super interested in it because they want to they wanna do it for themselves, right? They want to look better, feel better. They want to uh, hopefully fight off any kind of uh, bugs that might come in the future. And that's the best way to do it. So we're going to kind of talk about some of the rules, what we want to achieve maybe, how everybody can get involved uh, while I look for this. Yeah, it's uh, R. Rico posted it. He said, uh, this is my wife's and I set up in our shed. They got the uh, Don't Tread on Me flag. What is that? Texas? Oh, yeah, they had the Don't Tread on Me Texas flag. Nice. The U.S. flag. They got it like a bench slash squat rack. You could do leg extensions on that bitch. They got a rope. Um, what do you call those boxes? Like a plyo box, the jump box? Yeah. Yeah, nice setup. Very nice setup. I see like a treadmill. Okay. I wonder if they built this shed specifically for that. Probably not. You know. <laughs> but you got to work with what you got, right? Kind of like you do here. My shed's going to have to have mats. You know what I'm talking about? I can see that actually happening in the near future. Having something like the like Thug Nasty or Rogan has set up with the zebra mats on the wall and then the jutsu mats. Once once we get the, uh, you know, the, the Patreon to grow. Yeah. So you can work on your ground game and you can work on getting up, you know, work on the cage work. You know, they say like you have against a cage oh, yeah. if you're on the ground and use the cage to get back up. You don't mm-hmm. want to do it on the on the wood or on the concrete. Yeah. You got to have the mats on the mm-hmm. wall. That's exactly right. Because we go on walks in case a motherfucker get out of line. They might end up uh, up against somebody's fence. There you go. Like it's a cage fight. All right. So this is going to start. When should we start it? Should we start it on the first, which is Saturday, this this Saturday? Or should we start it on the third, which will be Monday, the first Monday of the year? Uh, I think Mondays sound right. Sounds cool. So the first Monday of the year, the third, uh, in in plain black and white, how many? Uh, we're not just measuring off a of weight, you know. There are other goals you can uh, hit here, but how many lbs you want to try to drop before you're stage ready for that first show of 2022? Um, I think if I drop 10 pounds, 
it'll uh, help in the waistline department. You know, clothes will fit better. I won't have to, like, you know, have the love handles. And, you know, you could just move around comfortably. You could, you know, everything fits. Yeah. Everything fits better. You don't have to be like, ooh, how are these made? Ooh. Yeah, no, I don't. Mm-mm. Then the, the new rashies will come in, too? New rash guards. I'm going to be walking around. I'm saying rashied up all the time. Just in case, motherfucker want to roll at Starbucks. Did you get a like the belt one that has your like? A, was it a white belt rash guard or is it just a regular rash? Mighty Soul was instructed by you, sir. Oh, okay. To, to go get Venom, and I don't know what she what what design. Oh. I was like asleep on the couch. Uh, was it Christmas morning or whenever that was? Because you know when you got babies and you taking turns trying to with the night shift, like she mainly ha- she handles like ninety nine percent of like baby duty night shift. She's the one with the milk and the breast and all that. Um, but every, every blue moon. So anyway, that was one of the blue moons. So I'm like on the couch and they're just like, Oh, have Merry Christmas. Good morning. And she, uh, she handed me the thing and it was like the card with the envelope. And then you see the printouts of like origin main boots going to take six to eight weeks to get made and get to you. Um, badass. Yeah. So I was like, Oh shit. I was like, how'd she know? And it's like, I've been watching all the origin like how they make their jeans, how they make their boots, like all, the they YouTube have, history is all. Yeah, that. they have like vlogs. And oh, they, cool. they do a lot of cool shit. They talk business. They talk about like why they made this hoodie, like what the steps, how the, why this fabric, you know, why these pockets on these jeans, whatever. So I think I made it kind of obvious. And uh, she got me the mouth guard. She got me a whole bunch of stuff. I have class tonight. I don't know if the mouth guard is gonna be in by then, but she got me a little rash guard thing. Um. So yeah, man, I'm excited. Cool. You know what I'm saying? My fighter name is Baby Glock. Yeah, we didn't get to mention it on the show. <laughs> Pedro Baby Glock Herrera. <sighs> and then my fist going to be raised up. Yeah, like the Marxist fist? No. <laughs> <laughs> you going to salute? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey. hey what are hey, you saluting watch, to? Watch, hey, watch that now. All right, so uh, what, what day is that first Austin show? It was February 17th. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. February 17th, Austin, Texas. February 17th. All right. That's, um, uh, what is that? I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh, it's a Thursday. All right. Thursday. It's the third week of February. So we got three weeks, uh, four, five, six. We have seven weeks, almost eight weeks exactly to the day to lose 10 LBs. Oh, so doable. Yeah. Okay. So doable. I just got to crank up the heat, man. Yeah. Um, I mean, we already have a trainer. I do jujitsu once a week only at the moment. And, um, you know, it's just about turning up the heat, getting more steps, drinking more water, just tightening up all the routines. You know, hold yourself accountable. Like, hey, dude, if you're snacking on the Christmas crack a little bit too much, yeah, you know, chill out. Yeah. Chill out with some of the sweets. I was just snacking on it for the last time. That's you it. Know, take your coffee black. You don't got to put a whole bunch of whole milk and a whole bunch of syrups and shit. Do you usually put stuff in your coffee? Nah. No? I'm just, you know, I'm just letting people know how they can tighten up. And uh, my homeboy Juan, uh, Juan Perez, comedian, he, um, he's like, hey, man, I'm trying to get down with y'all's, with y'all's thing. And I was like, well, first of all, Mr. Road Warrior, I was like, you're going to have to make sure you get sleep. You know what I'm saying? That affects your hormones, your recovery, everything else. And so uh, I'll talk to him about it, you know. Maybe we should let him into the Discord. Yeah, I'll, 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 uh, I'll talk to him. See yeah. if he wants to join in there, join in the conversation. Uh, mm-hmm. How often do you roll with him, or do you not roll with him as far as stand up wise? Um, well, he's going to come to town. We're going to film a bunch of content. Nice. So, um, so we're just going to try to knock out a bunch of little oh. videos and stuff. So it's eight weeks. Let's, that, that should be the first challenge. That should be the first challenge of 2022. Instead of making it like a really huge, lofty challenge for everybody, now we're all on the same eight week challenge. Baby steps. Baby steps. And then we'll, from there, we'll see how everybody's progressed, right? And see how we can add on to that. Right. Instead of trying to be like, oh, you know, six yeah. month challenge. We're going to yeah, all lose yeah. 30 pounds a year from now. We're going to check in. Exactly. Like, no, we're going to do weekly. And I'm, and I'm going to try to because Dawn's really good about setting up these kind of challenges with uh, old groups, old competitors and shit of hers. So I'll stay on top of it in the discord and on Patreon, especially for the people that are paying for the premium content, because we're going to be talking about this on both free and premium epi- members only episodes. Eight. So that's one point two five pounds a week from now until February 17th. Super doable, right? Uh, now the conversation about like what's your activity going to be is going to come up. What's your eating going to be like is going to come up for you. So you can kind of 
post about that as you want in there, and then people can obviously ask oh, questions. Oh, I can show pictures, bro. I'm yeah. so spam tripping. Yeah. Okay. Um, Maybe I'll find a way to post it like on my Instagram, too. Just be like, hey, all the patrons, y'all already know. Everybody on Discord already know. But uh, this is what we're doing. Eight-week challenge. Oh, no. Eight-week 2022 challenge. Uh, and then if... Imagine if we can get everybody. I don't know how many people in the Discord. It's over like 60 or 70 people now uh, of the couple of hundred that are in the Patreon, which I wish everybody would join, but I understand some people just don't use it. If everybody lost 10 pounds, like just communal, like as a community, how many pounds that is that's like collectively? Lot. That's a lot, right? We're a lighter community. Exactly. And then you just kind of build upon that. I think it's mm-hmm. pretty exciting. And you know what I should do, man? Like I was saying about letting more people in on what we're doing. Uh, maybe you and I can just film a quick little sideways video and I want, I don't want to like take up vlogging because vlogging's a fucking pain. Yeah. I, I can't stand vlog. Vlogging's a lot of work. But when you're doing something like this, mm-hmm. where it's kind of like, oh, he's doing a, a eight, like eight video check in of like, all right, guys, I only lost a pound. All right, guys, I gained three or whatever. That might be something that can help like build the youtube a little bit yeah or you could just do just like do that on because you already post all the workout videos right but you're never you, you've never actually said like you've never done a uh, like a vlog style video or a selfie video where you're like okay i'm working on this particular goal by this particular time like you just get after it and you let people know that you've been after it right but in this case it's a good opportunity to be like if you want to join the challenge with us or join the community mm-hmm. plug the podcast and the discord yeah, and the yeah, newsletter yeah. and all that and i can plug the show because it's yeah. like you know um getting ready for that first show exactly Exactly, because I will say this, man. I don't know what it was about 2021. <sighs> just couldn't get right. Yeah. It, was, it was just like, you didn't know what was up, what was down. It was so frustrating. Like, oh, we got to, how are the tickets doing? We got to do this. Do they even know? Why am I shadow banned? Blah, 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 blah. Is anybody? And all this, like, political stuff is new. Where It's like, am I canceled in Cali? Yeah. You know, and it's just so many question marks where, where basically my point is that even towards the end of the tour, you're like, and I now feel like I'm catching a stride in terms of like, you know, like when you have too much chaos and you don't have your systems in place where it's like you haven't done the meal prep, you haven't hired, you know, the, the people, the team mm-hmm. or or whatever. It's like you look at the tour and it's like, damn, bro, you were just behind. Like here we are starting a new tour, but it's like, no, I'm going to be ahead now. Mm-hmm. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Actually, just thought about it. So Thursday, this is going to drop on a Thursday, which is going to be New Year's Eve. Uh, or no, I'm sorry. It's going to be the 30th. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exactly eight weeks from Thursday. So on Thursday, guys, we're in the Discord. If you're not in there, get in there. Um, I want everybody to stay as accountable as possible. So posting a picture of like, just get a, a blank piece of paper like off of your printer or whatever. Write the date. Put it in front of the scale on the floor and then check it and then weigh in and then write down the weight. So we'll know like what the date was and what you weighed in that day and then post it. Like if you're insecure and you don't want to post it, that's fine. But the more people that post it, the more people we can keep each other accountable. And that'll be a good way to stay uh, checking in as well. And these are going to be Monday check-ins? We're going to do it on Thursday as the initial one. And then I feel like we should do it every Friday. And here's why. Fridays are a good day to check in in general when you have a goal because... If you're trying to if you're trying to hit because all of this is being in a calorie deficit, right? In order to have the activity high and have the calories just below wherever your maintenance is, if we check in on a Monday, you will have had to really like keep a really tight weekend. But if you check in on Fridays, okay, you have a little bit of wiggle room. It's, it's psychological. It y'all. is super psychological. He's I, like, hear me out. Hear me out. I'm, I know you're gonna gain a couple pounds Saturday, Sunday. A hundred percent. And you want to give yourself a little bit of that wiggle room to not be so hard on yourselves. Yep. Because when you, most people are like, oh, Monday it starts, right? And Monday I'm going to check in. Well, if you fucking worked out Monday through Sunday. It's like you didn't went to brunch. Exactly. You know, you had a mimosa or two. Yeah. You were jamming puro pinche party on oh, the way well, here. Las pinches michilas con madre. Toda la sal. Your, your vieja wanted some wine. Yeah. Somebody actually suggested uh, that we should have a weigh-in for all the locals at 8th Wonder. <laughs> I was like, what are we going to do? Have beers afterwards? But, uh, yeah. I mean, we should do more meetups this year. Like, yeah, yeah, I just, agree. We'll, we'll talk about that. Like, what's a good day? And yeah, just start doing that. that'll be a separate thing. Maybe we can do a quarterly thing or something like that. But yeah, so that's what we want. That's what I want to do. What do you think about p- having people check in like that? Mm-hmm. And then at the weigh-in at Eighth Wonder, I'll be like, everybody follow me to Secret Group. Uh, y'all, could, y'all could root me on and shit. 
<laughs> what are you going to do? Secret do show? Just, you know, you want to do some open mic shit or something. I don't know. Okay. But, but might actually work out with my people there. Yeah. Versus fucking dumbass chicks sitting there talking to each other. <laughs> stumbled in off the fucking street. And it's like, I can't work like this. What's the last open mic you did of 2021? Uh, I don't, I don't like open mics and I never did. Never have, never will. And I looked at, I found an old journal entry from yesterday. We're cleaning out the storage unit and it said something like, have to find a way to navigate the murky open mic waters. Like don't want to pick up bad habits. Like you just see myself like describing the experience. Like it's like, uh, after that room, I went and hit this other room and it was, it was all comics in the crowd. And it's like, and I actually went up, believe it or not type of thing. And it's just, um, I don't know. I, I think uh, I think there's a lot of uh, really talented local comedians who are putting together some good shows. I think those are the ones that are worth being a part of and attending. You know, like um, you know Jeff Joe and uh, Jesse Saldana. They have they do a thing. I think it's called like Chicken and Tacos or some shit like that. So the ones where it's actually like okay, you'll see Gary uh, Grady Pruitt up there or Victor Tran, like just really funny people. Mm-hmm. And those are good lineups versus like, I've seen some weird shit done on stage, bro. Like what, what type of Portland, Oregon? <laughs> like what? It's just all T weird. Like, like there's some dude up there. looks like he's one of them viral teachers that are like, I talk to my students about queerness, <laughs> you know, I'm gender fluid. So this one, I walked in, it was a secret group. It's ma'am. Yeah. It's ma'am. The fucking, the side room, the box or whatever. By the way, I think they require all their comics to be vaccinated, but. Not your boy. <laughs> um, so anyway, the dude was up there and he's just like, you know, up there like mouth breathy, like cross armed uh, alt comic. And he's just like, first of all, he doesn't even have no one's attention. He's just going on and on. He's just like, yeah, then uh, the teacher walked out the room. So I, I masturbated in her uh, desk and then, uh, then they caught me and uh, no, and I didn't get caught, and I wish I had, because that would have saved me years of therapy and something, something, something. All right, guys, uh, my name's... And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Like, who told you that was funny? Like, did you not see the... Cra- like, have you told this weird story before? Like, where's the punchline? This is just shock and awe. Like, weird meta, like a joke within a joke, weird story. First of all... <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of jokes and punchlines, Jesus Christ. Marisol told me the story, story Marissa told y'all. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, dude, I was like, I wouldn't want to follow her if she told that story on stage. It was hilarious. So she it told, had punchlines and callbacks. Dude, dude, dude. She told us <sighs> when she, so when y'all were supposed to come over but bailed on us. But anyway, on fight night for the pay per view, she came over, right, with the kids. We bailed. Okay. Yeah, y'all were sick. Y'all were sick. Okay, go on. But uh, I'm just throwing a little jab out there. Mm-hmm. It's okay. I don't. My feelings weren't hurt. Um, so she told the story for the first time to anybody that wasn't like her husband, and she told it really well. It was fucking hilarious, right? And it was even funnier than the, what she said yesterday. But, dude, that's a crazy real story. <laughs> should we? Should we tell the listeners what hilarious, she did? Hilarious, bro. Have you ever done that, by the way? Accidentally drink. Okay, don't give up the punchline. Um, shout out to Marissa at <laughs> at Juice Caboose. Basically, man, this is a very funny story, <laughs> but it's hilarious. It, it was about um, her and her two sons, and she had the newborn daughter. They're like hauling ass to go to this school program thing, and they had to park really far, and she decided not to have the, the stroller thing. She's like, oh, it should be a short walk. Now they're like doing this long ass hike. She's tired. She's dehydrated. They go attend the thing. Now they got to do this two mile hike back to the car. Oh, first of all, on the, the, way, on the way there, there um, the 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 middle son had to pee really bad, so she's like, "Here, piss in this bottle." Yeah, boom, he handles business. She put she puts it back on her thing, <laughs> and um, I'm probably butchering it, but this shit is funny either way. She gets back in the car, tired as fuck, dehydrated. She's like, "Oh my god, what a long walk!" Grabs the bottle of water, chugs it. It wasn't water. She said it tasted like uh, baking soda. A baking powder looked over at her son and said, "Boy, you need to drink more water. You're dehydrated." But she swallowed it too, and 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 something about her son saying, "That's what you get." Yeah. <laughs> there was so many callbacks and punchlines, dude. <clears throat> I remember hearing about uh, Leota Machida and some other UFC fighter that used to drink their own piss. Why? 
they felt these were like these were old school OG Brazilians that felt like they got some kind of nutrients out of it. They got like some kind of recovery nu- nutrient. <laughs> Your face. Where'd they come up with this? Where do they come up with anything that they do in Brazil? Like, well, I mean, how is acai such a super? I mean, I guess maybe there's no an explanation for that, but you know, they eat acai for everything. Like, it's like a superfood, right? <clears throat> for everything, or just like they eat it every day? I mean, it's like a superfood. It's supposed to be like immune building. It's supposed to be, you know, this, that, and the other thing. I could be butchering that, but mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Ha- man, I wouldn't mind. Man, I used to always want to go to Brazil, but um, how are they right now with the lockdowns? That's a great question. I don't think they're uh, free. I don't want to do. This sucks because we used to do a decent amount of traveling. We used to like traveling. Now I have no desire because, like, who who was? It? Oh, Joseph. Joseph was like, uh, "Hey, me and my girl are going to Salt Lake City." Uh, he's like, "I did want to go abroad, but," and I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> motherfucker, you've been listening to me, <laughs> like telling you like now's not the fucking time. You fuck around, get stuck somewhere, or get caught up in a protest or some shit." But um. But anyway, yeah, he's going to Salt Lake City. Yeah, that it, it, that's it already works for me because I really didn't care to tra- travel abroad that much. Only thing I really wanted to do was see the pyramids in person, and that's about it. Which ones? Yeah, just any of them. Just go any, to just any, just see the pyramids. Yeah, the, the Mexico ones or the Egyptian? No, the ones? Egypt ones. Oh, yeah, okay, not Sorry. the Mexico, not the motherland. No. Oh, okay. I mean they're cool, but they're very, not like you're very dismissive. How you said that? Yeah, yeah, super dismissive. Like yeah. <laughs> the real pyramids, yeah, yeah. the pointy top ones, yeah. not the staircase ones. Yeah, yeah, none of those fucking uh, the smooth side ones. No, 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 no. I want the ones where there's pharaohs and and uh, you know ancient Greek god mythical creature stories about that kind of shit. Uh, have you heard how many little vendors there are around there? <clears throat> like how it's like a little flea market. Why are, you, why are you ruining my fucking video? Because this is it. Look, check this out. We went to... Have you been? Not, not, not the Egyptian ones. We went to the Great Wall of China. I know, right? CCP. Mm. Went to the Great Wall of China. We went to the, uh, the, the Mexico pyramids. I forget which one. It's line, one of them. But you see the same shit. This is what they all have in common. It's going to be like a Subway sandwich spot. Like, it's just, stu- it's just tourist stuff. Like, people selling trinkets. It's like a pulga. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of like, okay, we're at the Great Wall, and there's a fucking Burger King right there. You know what I mean? There's a cart, a it's, burger cart. No, it's like literally like a Burger King. Yeah. It's like your last stop. Like, basically, this is where some people park, and you can buy bullshit trinkets and, like, keychains and just whack shit. And then you go to the, uh, the Eiffel Tower, same thing. Um, at the Eiffel Tower, people like to, because the Eiffel Tower is lit up with like, almost like Christmas lights. Mm-hmm. So in the evening, the French have really figured out how to live life in terms of like after work, you get a baguette, you get a bottle of wine, and then you go sit out like on the canal. Motherfuckers out there listening to trap music and shit. It's almost like a little picnic. Or like say you're at the Eiffel Tower, there's that grass lawn, almost like Discovery Green, like right there. And you want to put your blanket and look at the thing light up. And same thing. African immigrants, Indian immigrants, like they just come out of nowhere with like a a blanket over their shoulder. And they're just like, boom, y'all ain't got no wine. Here goes some wine. Um, uh, Eiffel Tower keychains, they're like 10 cents each. Fuck it. Give me a dozen. I take them home to family, right? When you get home. And then the cops come. They're like, police, you know, police, whatever. And then they just take their little table blanket set up and just whoop, 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 and they keep it moving wait till the cops leave boom they out slanging wine and trinkets again so all these places it's just a bunch of trinket slanging motherfuckers it you just know, kills the the romanticism of it. it kills the vibe right well you're like oh this is so ancient historic and I'm, I'm being so worldly and it's like fuck they're selling me stuff why do you think we have a problem with that why, why would I have a problem what, with No, I'm, I'm just generally, like, because I, I, I think that's also lame, too. But why do you think we have such a problem with, like, having all this touristy shit around these, like, historical locations and markers? There's something just, like, gross about it, it right? Like, it, like, cheapens it. Like, oh, look, we're in Rome, the Colosseum. Uh, fuck do you want? It's like, where am I, Vegas? <laughs> yeah. Like, you look, there's people with flyers and, and the dude with the, uh, the fake suit where it looks like a headless guy on a suit. Mm-hmm. And people go take pictures next to him. It's like... What's happening here? Uh, you ever been the Grand Canyon? No. Have you been anything anywhere in the United States that's like a like a big kind of like go to touristy place like that, like Statue of Liberty or? Um, I mean, been to New York. But so. have you been to Statue of Liberty? No, like Would, got got on the ferry yeah. and like went around. Would you do all that? 
You can't pay me to go to New York right now. No, no, no. Of course not. Yeah. We're talking about in the like, perfect world. It's like, yeah, I want to look at it. But I saw it plenty of times, like from a plane. We're talking like ten. This is all gonna go back to normal in about ten years. You think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe twenty. Which kind of normal? The new normal. <laughs> We're in the new normal now. So you think it's really gonna go back to like America to free and denim? And yeah, yeah. It'll take a couple of decades. It's gonna really? take these kids that are in their, their preteens to grow up and start changing. Just shit. start making culture. And yeah. It's going to take a while. Music and film and all this. Yeah, feel like you can be free again to speak your mind. Free to be the baddest bitch. It's going to take a long ass time. But by then, they'll all be in the metaverse by then. They will be in the metaverse. It's You know how the left is uh, in control of entertainment, media, and all that? That's where the, the the metaverse, I think, is going to be the media hub of the future. Like ideas are going to form in the metaverse and they're going to come out into reality. And those that don't want to go to the metaverse will be able to enjoy the things that are going on in there, but in reality. Does that make sense? Kind of like God's metaverse, like God's simulation. Yeah. Like where where God made us to where we can sense and feel as if we're here. There you go. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Matrixy. Super Matrixy, which, by the way, I thought the movie was terrible. Oh, man. I was so confused. Uh, I was too. I was like, okay, let me watch this shit again. What did I miss? I was like, dude. So basically parts one, two, and three were worlds created by God. Keanu Reeves and Future is a video game, and now wait, it was so poorly but it's written. Still a simulation. It was like in. It was like Inception, a simulation front inside of a simulation. I felt like I could have read the book Chino gave me and writ- wrote written a better movie. Yeah, like Doogie Howser was his therapist, but he was an agent too, and like it was terrible, went, dude. I did not like it at all. I was so confused. I was like, oh my god. We watched it. My dad loves movies, right? So they came over for Christmas Eve, and uh, the first thing he says before we even ate, did gifts or anything, he's like, "What movie are we watching tonight?" I was like, "At first thing that came to mind, I was like, the new Matrix just came out." And he goes, "Oh, great, we'll, we'll watch that." I'm like, "Okay," he was falling asleep on the couch. I was like, "God damn it!" It was so weird. It was just boring. It was it was slow. It was long as fuck too. It was two and over two and a half hours long. Mm. It just drug on. Sorry guys, if you like it, I, I saw I saw that some people enjoyed it. I don't know how. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe man. I'm just being too hard on it. Yeah, I don't know. It was just a little confusing. Maybe I missed something. Like, okay, maybe I went to the restroom at the wrong part and I I totally was confused. It's like it's almost like Keanu Reeves like was trying to live the blue pill life. Like he was no, no. Right. Like not wanting to face the real reality. And I think that's what some of the people in the Discord or in the Patreon were saying about how they were trying to like take back the red pill thing. I don't know how much of that I really caught in there. Other than that, like he didn't, he was resi- he was resisting the red pill, and he just wanted to live this like oblivious blue pill life of monotony and you know being told what to do and stuff. And he was supposed to be enjoying it. Like nobody likes that. But then again, look at the blue states. Mm. Did have you seen the uh, the Beatles thing? No, I heard it was good. It's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. You watch all of it? No. 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 It's like a fucking series. Oh, okay. But they had all this footage, and you just see Yoko Ono all in the mix and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, that reminds me. So what I was saying was that, speaking about going back to the metaverse, Tim Dillon was on there, right? Did you hear that episode? When he was like, Rogan, yeah. do you own real estate in the metaverse? <laughs> He's like, what? No. I know you have a house. Love Tim. He's like, you got to have a Rogan coin and all this, right? And Tim's like kind of joking, but he's also all in on figuring that shit out, like NFTs and the coins and whatever in the metaverse. And then the next episode, it was Red Band. It was the anniversary episode, and Red Band's all in on that. Like, he spends a lot of his time in the metaverse, like, playing uh, Grand Theft Auto. You gotta listen to that episode. It was really good, because most of it was just talking about the future of, like... The Red Band episode? The red, the, just okay. the Red... Not the Hinchcliffe... That, that one was good, too, Hinchcliffe and him, but the one where it's just Red Band for the anniversary was a lot, because Red Band is, a, is big into tech and technology, or uh, computers and the future of shit. So he was explaining to Joe how he spends a lot of his time in the metaverse, and how... He's got groups of friends and community in the metaverse and they, they convene like they'll play like what I like. And I've seen this and people chime in in the discord where, you know, Grand Theft Auto, you mm-hmm. ever play it? Mm-hmm. Does it interest you at all? That kind of like yeah, open world had, game. If, 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 yeah. If I had, if they let me. OK, well, fi- we're going to figure I it out. I ain't got a it. fucking console. Bro. We're going to figure it out. Well, that's why I bought this, too, so I can play on this and Weston can be playing the Xbox. But uh, it's open world. You're driving around. Some people go around. They just like kill hookers and like run over people and have the cops chase them and shit. But what people are doing is they're going into Grand Theft Auto and they're like having stories where like, let's say you and I are playing in the game. 
you're a, a owner of a DJ store or a cop and I'm like a civilian or I'm a musician, they'll go in there and they'll like role play, right? So you'll be the owner and they'll do voiceover of the, of the, of the game characters and they'll have like this whole story and narrative that they'll play in the game and people like watch it on Twitch or stream it or whatever. And it's like you're watching them play the game, but they're making stories within the game for themselves. So are you um, like say you're a pawn shop owner and I'm a cop. And when they're talking, are we talking like this in real time? Yeah. And then we upload that clip. Yeah, yeah. To, to share it and people can yeah. watch. Yeah. Or you're, or for do, let's say we were doing it live. Let's say we're playing right now. I'm the pawn shop owner, and I'm I got some kind of deal going on in the background, and you're trying to like go in there and trying to bust me, right? And then we'll play through this whole scene, and then eventually, let's say you catch me, and you're gonna take me out to your car, you put me in the cop car, and now we're driving to the police station. You're driving, I'm in the back, and we're having like an exchange in the car, you know, and it's just like a movie. And Red Band was explaining to Rogan how like he goes. I love movies, but movies aren't entertaining anymore. Like to get people to go to a movie, to drive to the movie theater, spend a hundred bucks with your, your family and yourself uh, for a movie that let's just say you went to go watch the matrix and you spent $75 plus the movie. It sucked. And then you go back home. Like, man, I spent hours of my day, a bunch of money. You jump into the metaverse and you did something like this. Let's say you weren't even playing it. You're just watching this whole thing go down. It's way more entertaining than going mm. to the movies. Interesting. Yeah. It was really interesting the way you put it. I watched a couple episodes of Johnny swims, uh, vlog reality show thing yeah. reality show on the Magnolia Network on Discovery Plus have mm -hmm. you ever seen that no never okay I love them <clears throat> I get so frustrated watching this couple I get so frustrated Johnny Swim or the yes. Magnolia uh, yes Johnny Swim I get very frustrated I like yell at my TV yeah I do too because I want Abner's voice that's the only reason I yell at the TV bro and it has nothing to do with Abner's <laughs> musical talent um so they had an episode where they discuss, oh, my God, like so many people in so many states are still catching Corona and we feel like we want to do the right thing. I told you. And postpone everything. And one of her friends, um, Amanda's friends, is a epidemiologist of some sort. And it's like, OK, advise me. And it's like, you know, what is the trend? Where are things headed? It's like, well, I mean, you know, there's still cases and, you know, the spread. And it's like, it's like, okay, cool. What that got to do with my tour, right? And my ability to go out on the stage and safely sing and fucking perform. Because they love singing, performing, writing songs. They love that shit. And it was so depressing when they are like on a Zoom call with their management and the agent, you know, you got to have all these people, right? And it's like, okay, guys, let's just rip off the Band-Aid. All right, all right, all right, we're, just, we're, we're postponing. We're going to postpone. And you know the agents and managers are like, bitch, how we going to eat? <clears throat> how y'all going to eat? And uh, so they're like, yeah, we're going to have to postpone everything. And it's like, that means the album's going to have to be postponed. Like, it's going to throw off everything. People already bought tickets. They're like, okay, we're going to go film the video where we tell everybody how brave we were. I told you about that video a and, long time ago. And made such a difficult decision to do the right, remember, Rob? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The right thing. So then the following episodes after that are them being desperate, performing at a, at a um, what do you call it? A drive-in movie theater. Because Abner, because they had just did a quick uh festival in north carolina they like flew in just them two left the kids with the aunt and the grandma and um first of all they left florida the aunt and the grandma left florida to come be closer to abner and them and the kids and shit and now they're in lockdown ass burbank california so anyway uh abner and amanda johnny swim they went and performed like very rusty they had to like work out some kinks at a festival but they were like oh my god this is what we love to do. This is what it's all about. I miss you. Oh, my God. To be human, to be out of the house, to be performing these songs that we wrote and to, this great crowd. And then they come back and then they make that decision and that announcement. And now the next couple episodes are like, we need to perform somewhere. So then they're like, uh, when when a chance to have us perform at your wedding. And they just had everybody email, and then they pick somebody. So now they're like awkwardly sharing a microphone in front of strangers, or performing at a drive-in movie theater thing, where it's like container shipping containers with a projection type thing, in front of a handful of fans that received an email, and it's attached to a uh, a landing strip airport. So there's like, and it's like, ding, 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 trying to like 
perform and there's like a couple people God. and it's like y'all shouldn't have canceled y'all shit stop watching because they were like you know it's just because the news and and they literally said that you know it's just because the news and you just see abner like i'm from cuba bitch I'm like, like, i didn't want to do this almost like damn do we really have to like we're finally gonna go back out make money and perform and now, just because the news and these politicians are scaring us, like, you, ha you haven't left Burbank. The rest of the country is damn near fine, for the most part. I know they make y'all think Texas is piling up bodies and Florida just can't get right. They're killing everyone. <clears throat> Not true. I absolutely love this band, by the way. If you guys heard us mention it before, um, I think Mighty Soul put you on to him, right? And then, yeah, yeah I, I for a long time, a friend of mine from college put me on to them. Dude, Abner and Amanda, the, the, the band's name is Johnny Swim. They're fucking amazing artists. And if you ever get a chance to see them live, it's one of the best shows hands down. And I've seen John Mayer live, and you guys know I love John Mayer. But um, during the pandemic, they were one of the bands that were doing uh, whatever they could to also do shows. Like, they did live stream sets that were phenomenal. Like, the production value of their live sets were great. Yeah. So it was kind of a bummer when, you know... When the whole, like, yes, we did it, like, they celebrated inauguration for Kamala and, and Joe Breezy, and then as more shit happened, they, they really took to that side really hardcore, and it's unfortunate now because it's really, from what we can see, right, from the outside, really biting them in the ass for having canceled this huge tour and putting a damper on their mental, mental health, right? Like, you don't want to give these people too much, you know, pobrecitos kind of thing, but, hey, man, you brought this on yourself. And props to them for being transparent and putting together a nice... Uh, reality show you know I'm still a fan of everything but but then you see well now Abner is like well I need to do something like I, I don't feel useful or anything so he picked up a uh, flight he got his pilot license oh word so they you see episodes of like now she's jealous she's bothered now they're having to get counseling and their family um, marriage therapy relationship therapy because she feels left out like he's being selfish pursuing this pilot thing and it's like you the ones that got him you the one that got him the lessons in the first place and encouraged the shit in the first place and y'all ain't touring and you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like uh, i mean <laughs> you're on stage you're not gonna catch corona like that like it's not, i mean i get it sometimes they go out there and get with the crowd okay well don't crowd serve Go from the tour, but they're like, I know, but, you know, it's just the way that we want to keep everyone safe from the sniffles. I want to watch this. What's this on? HD Discovery Plus. It's uh, under the Magnolia Network. Okay. It's on Discovery Plus has its own app? I believe so, yeah. Fuck, another app? Yeah. All right. Tell Marisol so Gee the login code. Orale. Orale. Orale, Holmes. Porfa. Porfa. Orale, mochate con el código. Que es la contraseña del Discovery Plus, ese... Porfa, toma el poke. Uh, that sucks, Vacúnense though. Vacúnense la verga, porfa. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. It, it was just... I was just yelling at the TV, like, <laughs> you didn't have to do that. Like, y'all just saw how much y'all missed performing, and now y'all over here, like, we're trying to find a way to keep the, you know, the crew active, and, you know, this particular young lady was the nanny on the road, but now she's operations manager. Like, they're trying to keep the team occupied, but you canceled your whole tour. Why? Because the news and because there's still cases of the sniffles out there. Early on, there was a bunch of Texas country artists that were putting on shows also in like their barns or their backyards or whatever. And as soon as they were able to put do shows, they were back on the road. Like Casey Donahue or Kyle Park or Randy Rogers or whatever. They did what they could because they, they, they also needed to perform, right? So they did their online streams or whatever. Cool. They're great. People were in the chat, Facebook, uh, YouTube, whatever. But as soon as they were like, oh, th at least the state's open for Texas country artists, that's a lot of their bread and butter anyways, going to local venues in Texas. They were back on the road. It's unfortunate that because they live in California and they're in that uh, bubble, they're not getting that same feeling that they can do the same thing. Yeah, man, it's almost like a, uh, a rhetoric bubble. Totally. As well, too, because if you listen to perverted ass CNN all day... <laughs> They got a bunch of pedophiles working over there. Y'all probably don't know because y'all probably don't peep game with the real news, the independent shit. So if you're just in a news bubble, you're living in a cultural society bubble, and you actually believe that these politicians are, are making the right choices, and it's like, 
man, I just pity some people sometimes. It's like, man, who's telling, how'd you buy into all this? Like you haven't questioned none of it. Like, like what news do you watch? And when you see people outside by themselves with a mask on, it's like, what news are you watching? Yeah. I was a uh, total non sequitur. I was watching Conspiracy Social Club episodes right on Rockfin, and then Jimmy Dore was streaming live. Why did I bring him up? Jimmy Dore was talking some shit, some good shit about somebody about this COVID thing. Um, psh, 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 let me think real quick. Do you ever do you ever watch any Jimmy Dore clips on YouTube? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, man, you mentioned something now that triggered it, but I forgot it. Um, <clears throat> I was saying that. Um, there's a rhetoric bubble. People don't question. Yeah. Um, you know, they believe these politicians are doing a good job and they just go along with it. Like, we have to cancel our tour. Yeah, it must have been another, not the one we played in RPT, but Fauci talking to somebody about, oh, it was a New Year's thing. I think, it, you know how he did the whole Christmas thing? Like, yeah, if, if someone in your family's unvaccinated, my t- now's not the time. Yeah, he went really deep, you know, again, all the various reasons about why you shouldn't gather for New Year and you should expect more of the same in 2022 and you shouldn't let up kind of thing. And it's Jimmy, like everyone's going to catch it, bro. Jimmy Dore just went in on him about how none of it made sense. And again, you know, he's always has his papers in his hand. He's like, like, what are we doing here? I need to watch that. And then there was, oh, um, Bill Gates. Uh-huh. He had Bill Gates and someone else on the screen. Oh, it was fucking Anderson Cooper <laughs> asking Bill Gates about all the shit. And he's like, and I didn't, honestly, I didn't know this, that... uh Bill Gates was like a college or a high school dropout or he's a super like uneducated. I forgot how he framed it, but he's like, he's not as educated as people think he is. And X, Y, Z names the things. And he's like, why do we have this fucking meet news guy talking to this fucking dumb My, guy, Microsoft, Microsoft guy. computer guy about a public health issue? Like, what are we doing? And in what world does that make sense? And he goes on, he streamed for like four and a half hours last night on uh Rockfin. Uh, Jimmy Dore did. Yeah. Okay. Damn. So, I guess Rockfin got a lot of people over there. You know, uh, who knows? We might set up a show over there at some point. But, um, but yeah, man, it just really broke my heart to see this couple. Like, man, and then the management—you know—they have to go along. The manager, I mean, they probably number one, they probably think the same and agree. You think so? You don't think they're trying to like try to get them to at least do some shows? Like, maybe we can do like half venues and blah blah blah. <laughs> They're having to do more work because now tours cancel. So now Abner's like, we got to perform. And now he's calling his manager with the harebrained scheme kind of like, hey, man, we got to do uh, a, 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 how about a drive in? I've been hearing that's the thing. And he's just like, all right, OK, well, let me fucking find. He's like, find us a venue like we need to find us a venue. We, we just got to there. Ha- he was like, there has to be a way to perform in a safe manner for just a handful of like hardcore fans just so we can fucking get our yayas out and perform and connect and be human. And he's like, okay, nigga, now you got me. <laughs> now you got me over here fucking... Still getting the same 10%. I mean, now you got me over here doing three times the work. Can you, that's why, God bless managers. Management, a lot of times, they're just babysitters, right? So can you imagine... <laughs> <laughs> yes you can yeah. can you imagine being somebody's manager bro and they just finished canceling a whole fucking tour and check this out he's like okay so i found us a venue but remember that la tour date that we hadn't fulfilled yet because you canceled well there's a clause in there where you can't perform in the fucking 300 mile radius or whatever, uh. right where they pay you like if i hire rob you're gonna come sing and perform at my venue on july 1st woo de woo okay guess what for X amount of time, X amount of mile radius, you ain't performing nowhere else because you're going to step on my toes because I'm giving you money. So now he's having to jump through that hoop, make those calls, get those exceptions like, hey, I know you hired us to do a thing and we haven't done it yet because they canceled every fucking they postponed. But they really want to fucking perform somewhere. So I'm going to find them somewhere to perform. But now I'm, I got to make sure it's cool with you. And I'm like, you got this man doing three times the amount of work. The album got to get pushed back. And I just started telling my soul. I was like, they must have got a good advance from mm-hmm. that book. They must have got a good advance for that album. And they must have got a good deal for this show. Because that's the only way I can imagine. Canceling the tour. I mean, just like. For the management to be like, all right, now I got to go jump through hoops, find another venue, call the promoter, see if it's okay. Is that common, doing that like you can't perform with an X radius? Yeah, especially once you get to a um, a certain stratosphere level 
a performance, mm-hmm. like say you're TI okay. and you're performing at an arena in Laredo, Texas. Well, you're now dealing with a certain caliber of promoter who has access to TI uh-huh. and to that arena. Therefore, they're going to have a certain caliber of lawyers <laughs> and a certain caliber of experience where they know, um, yes, the standard contract that my lawyers designed for me to use when I'm dealing with TI's management or whoever it may be, fill in the blank, it's going to already have a clause in there that says, hey, motherfucker, you're not going to be at Del Rio or wherever's near Laredo, right? You're not going to be at, you know, Carrizo Springs or somewhere the night before, my G. You know what I'm saying? If I'm giving you X amount of thousands of dollars, there's going to be a clause in there. So, yes, like, if, you know, Pitbull, anybody who's at a certain level that's dealing with a certain level of, like, Live Nation, House of Blues, like just a big promoter, Arena Theater. Um, you know, when Belly Beto was at the Arena Theater, I don't know if they dealt direct, but if there was a promoter, they're probably like, yeah, you're not going to be in Conroe. <laughs> you're not performing in Katy the night before. You're not doing the Sugarland Arena mm. the two days before. You're not going to go bleed Houston and then come do my show. And I'm sitting here goofy talking about why ain't nobody here. Uh, okay, that makes sense. It does yeah. make sense, right? You got to cover your cover your ass. Yeah. The arena theater right there, like going south, 59 South, that's where the Betty and Bethel show Betty was? Betty Bethel was, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. You ever, been, you ever seen MMA fights there? One time, I walked in uh, Demacio Page. It's I pretty was cool. part of the walk-in crew. Word? Yeah, man, I was part of the walk-in crew. Okay. Yeah. My bad. And I was I was holding up the, the banner with the sponsors. <laughs> and I had to make sure I mean mug the other team. All the other coaches, I had to mean mug everybody. Did you have your Canelo wig on? No. That would have been way better. Yeah. <laughs> Next time. It's like, look at little chubby Canelo. <laughs> look at this fake-ass little Canelo. I'll help you turn sounds off if you want after this. Yes, sir. Yeah. My wife got on my ass. You need to be wearing your watch. I'm like, man, fuck well, this watch. <laughs> Well, turn off. It's all cracked and shit. Turn off all the notifications minus uh, your activity, just so you can, yeah, keep track of that. You'll show me how to do that. Um, yeah. So moral of the story is: don't cancel your tour if you've got everything lined up, ready to go. Why do that? Unless it's like literally, we have a what is it like a World War Z kind of pandemic coming or out there, but like a real like a real one, like a real one. Um, it's a bummer. And then and then they do all that, and then they're probably like. I mean, think about it. How long ago was, was this um, decision made and what was happening? And now you now you got Omicron. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the mildest of the mild. They're probably like, well, and we fucking canceled everything. But um, I'm sure their fans will be there after the, the postponed. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I'll we'll still fucking go. I'll I mean, definitely go. I mean, we got tickets. I, Marisol and I had tickets. And I think to see them at, um, what's that, Magnolia, White White Oak? Oh, White Oak Music yeah, Hall. Yeah, White Oak Music Hall. And, I was like, man, he's old. Why are you pushing everything back? Comedy wise, mm-hmm. we're talking. Let's talk about that half hour special here. You kind of briefly mentioned it last week. <clears throat> when throughout the year do you think you want to try to tackle something like that? Um, you know, it's probably second half of the year, like after summer, maybe. Yeah, maybe like third quarter or so, maybe even fourth. Just to have that much more experience and just everything's polished and ready. You know, after that, our weight loss challenge. After a few of them. After a few of them. Remember, we're doing the first eight-week challenge. We should just keep doing eight-week challenges and building upon that. So by the time... And it'll coincide with my tour schedule. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Look at my Austin weigh-in. Dude, for real. Yeah. Let's get back to that, too, because you said on Fridays you should do it. You should do a check-in video on IG and be like, you know, you've been seeing me kind of hit it, get it, you know, getting ready for this tour. I started at this, you know, or the community, the whole TIA, you know, we started at this time. This is what I was. Maybe you can use some of the screenshots from the Discord that people post. I'm like, this is where some of the members were. This is where I am now. This is where they are. And just get everybody, you know, amped up to want to get involved. Yeah, 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 definitely. So you said Friday is probably a good day, you think? Friday is a good day to check in. Um, and then you kind of go about your weekend. And uh, we'll chat about resources and ways to kind of kind of help. Like, for me, like, overall, the, the overarching goal for the year is going to probably be to drop, like, 30 or 40. I want to get back to like the the shape I was in when Don and I first met, um, pre stress and pandemic and all that shit, um, and then just kind of go go harder in the paint than I have in a couple of years, you know, just cause like, why not? Why I, I don't want to go like I, some people were posting about uh, Goggins in there. Like I love Goggins' message for the most part, but that guy's a maniac. That guy's legitimately a psycho. 
You don't need to do that. You don't need to break your knees and your feet to achieve these goals. You know, he, there's other things besides running. Yeah. He himself says he's kind of twisted in the head and that's fine, but we want sustainability. We want shit we can continue doing after 2022, you know, and beyond. So yeah, uh, I'll post some of the resources I've told you about the carbon diet coach, as far as tracking your food. Uh, if you don't track now, get used to it to try to hit some of these goals at least maybe not forever but at least in the interim to try to get through the first eight weeks maybe 12 weeks and such uh good books and apps and even other podcasts possibly or influencers that talk about things that are just like not the typical like bro shit where it's like go to the supplement store and get all these powders and get all these supplements and stuff like the occasional thing it's good protein maybe uh, a recovery thing some glucosamine or whatever but i want to try to help the community achieve the shit that they want to achieve and then find out how they can learn to maintain that later on after the challenges are done. <sighs> yep. Cause that seems to always be the hardest thing. Yeah. Especially as we get older where it's like life gets hectic. You got a kid, kid on the way or a newborn or anything like that. Or things happen in life where your sleep pattern is fucked off or you can no longer make it to that one gym class you were liking. <laughs> um, diet. Like, well, you know, I'm just pick. I don't like Brussels sprouts. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, well. <laughs> yeah, I can post the, uh, I mean, I'll probably end up eating most of the stuff that Chingo eats, but like recipes and ideas, like cause Dawn's going to whip all that shit up. And I'll, I'll you know, I'm going to stick to her, uh, her portions and her suggestions more than I have been. Cause when she makes all the stuff for her clients, it's kind of just there. We haven't been, or I haven't been portioning it out. So it's like, it's really easy to overdo it on the veggie noodles or overdo it on the whatever's in the house. Oh, because it, you don't get it from where it's pre -served. Yeah, I don't, I don't preserve my shit. You go and grab from the main. Yeah. Once everything's done and delivered, we'll have big containers of chicken, steak, or whatever's left. And it's really easy to just, it, even if it's healthy food, if you eat too much of it, yeah. too much steak, too much chicken or whatever, yeah. it's like, well, shit, I'm not in a deficit anymore. Yeah. So portioning out, your, portioning out your shit is super important. And that's the tricky thing, too, because it's like, for example, it's like, well, you know, I'd like to put on more muscle. It's like, well, you got to have calories for that. It's like, but I also want to drop fat. It's like, okay, you got to be in a caloric deficit. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So just to, that's the reason I just said 10 pounds. Yeah, no, that's only, a great start. Only because like, realistically speaking, you know, it's like, you got some extra flab on you, Chingo. So, you know, that's where the 10 pounds going to come in. Like, you know, let's. Right now is not the time to be like, I'm going to put on muscle and I'm going to bulk up and I'm going to eat more and this right. and that. It's like, yeah, I mean, that's cool. You know, there's a time for that too. try to be Mr. Bulk. But uh, but right now it's like you got a bulky, uh, you know, lonka. <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard of this? Uh, magic, uh, magic Mind? Uh-uh. So uh, Callan put me on this. Um, Brian Callan? Brian Callan, yeah. I was listening to the podcast. Like, we're friends. He talked oh. to me yesterday. We put yeah. me on this. No, but... It, so apparently this, this product's called, it's the world's first productivity drink. I have always loved things like nootropics and things that kind of, um, get you in a, in a more productive kind of mindset. Yeah. I took two pills a day for that. Nice. Um, so the creator of this drink, uh, it's called magic mind. It's uh, magicmind.co. Scroll down a little bit. Okay. Uh -huh, go on. Uh, I'll, the, the, here's some ingredients. Down. Oh yeah. That's some of the shit I got. In my pills. Right. So coffee versus energy drinks and then magic mind. So the reason this product came to life was uh, the guy that created this was some kind of big billionaire, big wig of some company. I can't remember who or where. And he started having heart issues. He went to a cardiologist and found out that he had um, he had something and he couldn't drink coffee anymore. He had just he had drank way too much coffee throughout his life of building this this huge company. Right. And he said, well, shit, man, I love coffee, right? I love the stimulant, the caffeine, the ritualistic aspect of it all. I love coffee. What is out there and what can I combine to make something that would give me that same kind of feeling, that same kind of, um, you know, uh, energy, the same kind of euphoric, ritualistic kind of effect, blah, blah, blah. Here comes Magic Mind. And Callan's super like, I don't take anything. I've never really taken anything other than Shroom Sport from Onnit, which I, I've, I can attest to is fucking fantastic. Kind of expensive, but it's a really good supplement. Uh, coffee, you know, caffeine. Onnit, if you want to be a sponsor, holla at us. Yeah, we're going to reach out to them for sure in 2022. But um, yeah, I wanna, I'm want i going to get us some of this just to test it out. Because he said when he drank it immediately, like the first day, he could just tell like the kind of like mental clarity that you hear people describe from certain nootropics and certain supplements. And if it works, man, I'm all about trying to boost that mental edge, you know, almost over some physical performance edges most days, because I don't always need to feel like I can lift a fucking house, but I always do want to feel as sharp as possible just for either podcasting or just in general. Like mm -hmm. you kind of feel like the wheels are turning clearer. 
I don't need a deadlift 450 every day, but I do need to, you know, have the synapses firing as often as possible. So we'll review this and have our honest opinions of okay. it. Okay. So they deliver to your house? Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. It's like a little juice bottle? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then he has a book called Beyond Copy, Beyond Coffee, rather. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's expensive, huh? I don't know. Let's find out. I would imagine. Uh, subscribe. Yeah. One no, four ninety five per bottle, or you five, can subscribe yeah. and save. So either five dollars a bottle, or you subscribe and it's four dollars a bottle. So they probably recommend what one a day. Probably. I mean, if you think about how many coffees we have, at least a coffee a day, if not more, right? Yeah. So uh, if one of these gives you that same effect, fuck it, it's totally worth it. Three ninety five when you buy fifteen. You know, that's that's definitely probably what I'm gonna do initially to give it a fair shake, maybe for our first eight weeks, and uh, just see what we think about it. Um, you know what I would like to have? That's why I can't wait to move, man. Is have like that extra fridge. The garage fridge, dude, yes. is a must. Yeah, the garage fridge. Y'all got a garage fridge? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, the garage fridge where you have a bunch of them and then probably our meals. Right. Because with all the kids stuff, that ends up taking up all the real estate, like yogurts and juices yeah. and, you know, chucherias and shit. One of my roommates would came over for a uh, friends miss for whatever reason we brought that up they were like uh, his girlfriend wasn't familiar with that concept of like a garage fridge and that's how you know somebody grew up in the city versus if you grew up in the country everybody's got a garage fridge and freezer typically like all the hunting meat that you have is in the freezer and then all of your waters beers and other drinks are in the outside fridge i want to have a second freezer yeah as well because, for sure yeah because one has like pizzas and tamales and stuff like that yeah, but yeah, man, I just wanted to bring that to your attention because I really want to try it out so we can have our own honest opinions of it. Magic Mind, if y'all want to sponsor the podcast. Apparently, they did just start sponsoring podcasts because it's Holl a new us. product. Holl at us, Magic Mind. Yo. So yeah, I recognize some of those ingredients, the ashwagandha mm -hmm. and those types of uh, lion's mane. The pills that I took, it has a lot of that stuff in it. Yeah, those are really powerful mushrooms from what I've understood. Uh, you take it in a pill form or drink? Pills. How many days have you been taking it? Uh, it might be about maybe two weeks. Two weeks? How do you feel when you take it? Good. I, I can tell the difference. Um, Right now, though, I might have had too much coffee with it. You a little so, jittery? So or you're what? getting like this, like, like your, your almost like a little headache-ish. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, I could tell the difference with them pills. Like you just be a little bit more on it. Yeah. Like, especially if you're doing some kind of task. Uh, clean out storage unit or whatever. Um, is that what you're doing yesterday? Yes. How does that? How did that go? Let's wrap up with that. I would love to hear if you got anything accomplished that you feel like I got something done today. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. I have. I had some speakers on offer up. Finally got rid of them. Nice. Just because I was always juggling fifty things and I would never even reply to people. I'd be like, whatever. And um, and one dude happened to hit me up. Like I was there. I was like, man. Because, dude, I have a spotlight in there. I got, like, a fogger, a fog machine, another little logo spotlight thing. That, that's like, tripper pole. No, none of that. Um, speakers and all that stuff. But anyway, a, a DJ thing. So, buddy, I said, hey, man, I'll let it go for that price if you if you get it today. Because mm -hmm. I don't want this shit in here no more. Like, we need to make room in this bitch. And then, you know, that big podcasting table, I was trying to see if Joe wanted to get it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, no, I'm good, G. And I'm like, fuck, this motherfucker's still in here. So anyway, buddy came, picked up the speakers. I'm like, all right, bet. That's one less thing. And I bought those when I first started doing stand-up before I got into the improvs. So I thought I was going to have to have all as much. I had to have my own mic stand, my own stool, my own spotlight in case. Because in the beginning, bro, like, I can't even remember what venues we were doing. You know, it wasn't it wasn't comedy clubs. Yeah. So yeah, once boom, once I started getting to the clubs, it's like okay, there's no need for that mm. anymore. So we put that shit away. And um, how many storage rooms are you at right now? We have two units. Two units. We have the downstairs one where it's like decor, holiday decor for every single holiday you can think of. So we haven't got to that yet. Uh, I want Mighty Soul to be like, hey which valentine's day decor setup like which christmas setups which set of yeah. the three sets yeah because it's keeping? like it's the grinch theme there's Candyland. there's this and there's like you know boom 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 um so we did get a lot accomplished like we had a ton of winter clothes it's just like years and years and years of like oh you got you, you know shopping for stage you, you know you need this you got to get one of them and 
you got to get a couple of these and you know oh you gotta have these sneakers it goes with that and and then people give you shit too it's like check out these sneakers you can have a pair of these and then it's like joe now you can have them um but anyway um we did get a lot accomplished because i gave joe a bunch of stuff i was like joe put all this shit in your car before Mighty Soul gets here. So she's not like, hey, you could probably wear that again. Or like, hey, that was a really nice coat. You know, what if, what if one day, what if, <laughs> you know, what if one day you might want to. That could you know, be a States, uh, you know, uh, outfit for the future. No, nah, it was like a huge coat. And I was like, Joe, you're going to Salt Lake. Maybe take that. Um, And then I was so proud of Mighty Soul because she had a ton of clothes in there. And sure enough, dude, like, she got rid of a lot. She's just like, yeah, I know I'm going to fit this again one day, but you know, fuck it. By then I'll just get something else. And I think it's maturity, man. It's like you go through phases where you're young, you're single, you ain't got no kids. And it's all about like for her, it might've been like, Oh, purses and bags. Like, like she's almost like a, a collector, but she appreciates fashion and things like that. So her personality was like, I like it, I dig it, I want it, I'm going to get it. Versus, I like it, but I don't have to have it. You know, <laughs> like, I like it, I dig it, I appreciate it, like to look at it, would love to wear it, but I don't need it right now, you know? Yeah. And I just keep telling her, like, hey, look, next house, next house, be, it'll be, we'll have more elbow room, next house, you know. Because shit, you don't think I want a Peloton and shit like that? You don't think I want a boxing bag or uh, uh, the barn that these Texas artists, you know, you mentioned? Um, and it's like, you know, hopefully, you know, for, what the main thing we need is like the girls need a playroom. Oh yeah. Like, a like monster. a game room of some sort where it's like, all y'all shit is over there. Hey, I'm going to airdrop you this picture. We can go out on this. Tell me if this is something you have in mind, potentially like what you want. I, was, I went out to my parents actually yesterday at 6 30 in the morning. Mijo, I need to put the bumper on the 18 wheeler. Can you come help me? I was like, okay. So I had to go up super early. So I just, and that's kind of that just kind of went up around that area. Uh huh. This is in your parents' area. Yeah. So that guy, uh, my dad knows him. He's he's a farmer kind of character, but he just built that barn dominium and then a barn right next to it. Uh huh. Super dope, right? So that barn thing is almost like a four bay huge garage. Yeah. And what is he keeping there? All equipment, tractors, yeah, tractors and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have no fucking tractors. Much. Well, no, but that's what that that would be like uh, headquarters, right? Or, or are you thinking about like uh, the big barnuminiums where you live upstairs and you have like production downstairs? Nah, I like this. Where it's it, separate? For example, it'd be like the house part where it's like, that's where you're at with your family. There might be like a little a theater room or a TV room. Uh, you can entertain. If you have guests over, there's like a bar, um, you know, like the nice big open kitchen attached to the nice big open living room, maybe like a little view but basically, you got all your guns, your ammunition. Um, you go to that back part. Maybe that's where it's more of like the man cave production, creative. Like, you know, you might have some computers in a corner or something. If the gym can, stuff. Yeah, like some gym stuff. Um, <clears throat> all the stuff we like, man. Yeah. Yeah, that that's the dream right there. Look at that. That's beautiful. That's and, nice. And then you got like, uh, he's probably got, I don't know, 10 plus acres in the back. I wonder, what does he do with all? It's just there. It's just there. If uh, he could, he could probably grow the grass and bale some hay if he wanted to, or he might have a pond back there. Got to have a pond, right? You could be fishing. And yeah, stuff. be fishing. Go hang out. Maybe some trails. You just take the the ATVs and shit out there. Um, I, yeah, you definitely want to be self reliant and sustainable. Like, <sighs> that's like the worst fear, bro. Is you're living in the city, and all hell breaks loose, and you're dependent on the government after your food stores go down you know think about it man there's literally currency wars happening like there's stuff out of your control you know inflation wasn't your fault um the value of the dollar or is the dollar still the uh the standard you know the so reserve currency yeah the reserve currency so it's kind of like do you have gold to hedge against inflation and and the currency wars and you know is your roth ira backed by gold or what the fuck you know do you have 401k? I mean, what, you know, just like, do you have any crypto? You know, do you have any ammo? What are your assets? Are we going to... Do you have a pond? <laughs> do you have somewhere you can get water? Um, do you see yourself, us, this, eventually making its way into the metaverse somehow? Do you want to figure that out for the future? 
if to be completely honest, because I don't mind it. So I, I don't know about you, but totally against it. Um, I think I want firm footing in the real world, right? I want to make sure that like, I'm, you know, the vast majority of my relationships just, uh, you know, there's just so much value from like, this is still your real body. Yeah. And you still got to live in it. This is still what was given to you by God. And you still got to be able to keep it running. You know, you don't want to be the, the Cheeto eating VR to your face. You know, don't move. Sed- What's the word? Sedentary. What's the word? Sed- sedentary. Sedentary lifestyle. Um, however, if there's some opportunity where it's like, all right, Chingo, you still live in the real world. You still got your land. You don't got all these crazy motherfuckers all up on you. You still got all that shit you built up. But from time to time, you got to hop on this thing and go greet some people in this virtual thing. Like, is it a virtual comedy thing? Is it a, a meetup or whatever? I mean, I'm open to technology. I just want to, I just, I'm very weary of uh, going all in and letting it, because my theory is like, they want you on there. They want you distracted so they could buy up all the fucking real, yeah. all the real real estate is getting bought up from under you. Right. And you know why? Somebody made a really good point of this. Uh, if some business person was like, yeah, I'm, 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 you know, dipping my toe into the metaverse, but I'm also buying buildings. You know why? Because like, you're always going to need somewhere to plug your computer in. I'm like, oh, exactly. You're absolutely right. So don't forget that as well when it comes to investments and going all in or going in on something like the physical world's going nowhere. This is, none of this shit runs. This powerful computer doesn't run without that outlet in this building or garage or studio or anything. So, yeah, like I wonder, like people that are going to be all in, it's like, at what point do you unplug and then you got to go feed yourself? Like, at what point do you? They probably just have Soylent next to him. You know that product, Soylent? What is it exactly? Let me pull it up for you real quick. I saw the uh, the prosecutor of the uh, Rittenhouse was drinking that shit. Really? Yeah. That makes total sense. Yeah. Why would any male? Unless you don't know no better. Like Joseph, I had, when he went ve- uh, vegetarian for a little while, Yeah. I started calling him Soy Boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I started telling him, like, hey, bro. So the whole idea of this product, I think, was to... To not have to eat food. You just have to drink this and you'll get all of your nu- nutrients in it. So this bottle, it's 400 calories. How to read nutrition label. Um, yeah. What's in, let's see what's in it. Oh, I can't even read that shit. It's a bunch of chemicals. Is it just mainly soy? Uh, you got soy and chemicals? What's the first ingredient? Soy something. Soy, soy protein, protein isolate. isolate. Okay, so soy protein. And then canola oil. Canola oil. Maltodextrin, isomaltolosoluble corn fiber. This this sounds disgusting. Mm. Uh, some little vitamins and shit. Um, I mean, if you're a male, you should avoid soy at all costs. But look, they got creamy chocolate. So mm. let me ask you this: mm-hmm. How did this product uh, hit your uh, your radar? Somebody was on a, a podcast talking about how they were just trying to optimize their decision making. Basically, you know, people like humans, we're, we're really bad about making decisions. Like if, we, if we're given too many options, you're going to just fuck off time. You're like, I can't decide. Like, just give me whatever. Right. They wanted to try to optimize their daily schedules and eating to them was a headache. Eating to them was a nuisance. So they were like, I don't care what as long as it gives me at least the bare minimum of what I need, just give it to me. And this product was what came across their their desk. And it was a dude. It was a dude. Uh, yeah. And they were like, All right, that's fine. Like <laughs> I think he was kind of like a nerdy kind of guy. So he just wanted to be on his computer coding or doing whatever the fuck he was doing. And he's like, I don't have to go to the kitchen and cook something or have somebody cook me something or take all this time to digest this food and make me kind of bogged down. And so he, he was building up a really good case for it. But in the long run, I don't know how that is really going to benefit you versus eating some fucking chicken and broccoli. I mean, Klaus Schwab would love this. The World Economic Forum would yeah. love for you. Zuckerberg would love for you to just have a little straw down your little gullet with these little soy, a uh, bunch of estrogen pumping in your body, you know, fluoride and shit in your body. You don't want to rise up. You don't want to fight. You don't want to do nothing. You want to ask no questions. You just all in the metaverse over there with Zuckerberg. With Zuckerbuck. Zuckerbuck. The last yeah, episode of 2021, man, for Chingo Chats. This is it. Thank you guys for an amazing, amazing year. Uh, I know it was crazy. I know it had a little couple twists and turns. That's just called the fog of war. However, um, I like that we're discussing a lot of stuff for optimization 
and this long term wellness. And it's not about the scale. It's not it's not always about biceps and shit like that. Um, you know, we all want the same things, man. We just want to live a, a productive life and have an enjoyable time with our loved ones. So hopefully this show could be a way that we can all just, you know, have some community. Be human. Hell yeah. Optimize. Jocko Willing stuff. I went straight Jocko Willing at the end. You gotta come in here and throw some high kicks when you get those origin boots. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's what it's about. So we appreciate you guys. Y'all are the best. Happy New Year. Happy motherfucking New Year. And I don't want to see 2020 no more. I don't want to see 2021 no goddamn more. It's all about that, that deuce, double O, deuce, deuce. You heard me? Sass. Be safe. Peace.